Thank you so much. Uh, my name is CJ Camareri, and this is Trevor Hagen, um, and we are both on trumpet. Uh, we are a band called Carm. Uh, we released our very first record on January 22nd on 37D-03D, otherwise known as People. Uh, and this is our very first show. Uh, we want to thank the Pablo Center for being so hospitable and safe in these unsafe times. Uh, the first song we played was Soft Night, track two off the record. Uh, the next thing we're going to play is a song called Nowhere, followed by a song called, what's the next song called? Slantwise. Slantwise. Thank you.
Again, we are the band CARM, CJ and Trevor, and uh, we want to thank everybody here in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, who has always made us feel so hospitable. I am a semi-outsider to this community, but uh, I, I spend a lot of time here, and it feels like such a creative space for all of us. Uh, thank you again to everybody at the Pablo Center. Um, we're going to play two more songs here that are going to connect to each other. The first one is Invisible Walls, and then After Hours. Thank you so much.
Thanks everybody for tuning in uh, to CARM and welcome to our post show talk back. CJ, Trevor, welcome y'all. Hi, it's so nice to be here. Thank you. Yeah, it's nice to be here, thank you. Yeah, of course. Uh, well, a uh, phenomenal job and welcome everybody who, uh, who tuned in this, uh, this evening. It's a beautiful evening in Eau Claire, so thank you for uh, having this on in front of you. And uh, we just wanted to take, uh, you know, 20, 30 minutes here to chat with uh, CJ Camareri and uh, Trevor Hagen. Um, and, and first, guys, like, uh, you know, clearly you're accomplished musicians. Uh, you've traveled um, all over the world. You've got, uh, you know, an incredible um, uh, resume. And I just want to ask first, like, you know, what, what makes Eau Claire special to you and how have you seen it grow? over the last uh, uh, 10, 15 years. Go ahead, CJ. No, I'll let, I'll let Trevor start because he, he started here. I, I kind of discovered the musical community about 10 years ago. Um, well, you know, um, yeah, it's a yeah, great question. And it's something that I think, you know, CJ and I both talked about um, together because we have this different relationship to Eau Claire. Um, I'm from here and grew up here. and came up through, you know, the public education here and, um, and the university and, and played with a lot of folks from Eau Claire. Um, and that's what kind of has made it special for me is, is um, in terms of knowing where people are coming from or the resources of knowing how to get things done in, in the town, let's say, um, from rehearsal spaces to who, you know, we need a certain bass player for this thing and how to who to call um so it's special to me versus anywhere else in the world because um you know i'm I, I i'm from here so you know it has that quality for me that nowhere else has um in that it's a very definitive idea of, of home and of place and of belonging um and I've, I've i've lived in a lot of other cities in different parts of the world um and um, in those cities, uh, uh, I was always trying to find, you know, whatever, who are the noise guys playing noise and try to get in and find what they're doing. And which is a very interesting process, but you're always a little bit on the outside, um, which is also a very interesting perspective. So, um, so when I talk to CJ, you know, and he's been in New York for a long time, I'm like, man, I should get to New York and cut my teeth playing free jazz there. And he's just like, well, I come to Eau Claire, <laughs> you know, so... <laughs> So, so yeah, that's, that's a little, well, yeah, CJ, how do you feel? Yeah. So I, I came to Eau Claire for the first time, I guess it was the summer of 2010 and it was to work on what would become the second Boney Bear record. And before that time, I grew up in New Jersey and I like studied and played around the Philadelphia area. And then when I graduated high school, uh, I moved to New York to go to Juilliard and study classical trumpet at Juilliard. And I also played a lot of jazz and I played free jazz and I got involved with playing with indie rock bands and on Broadway shows. And I got a job with Paul Simon playing. So I, it was very like, you know, I was a working trumpet player, French horn player in New York City, living this very New York centric life, right? Like, and everyone in New York that is a working musician in New York thinks New York is the best is filled with all the best players. Now, there are great musicians in New York, but when I went to Eau Claire for the first time that summer, 10 years ago or 11 years ago, I was blown away. It kind of just like completely rocked my world. And I, you know, this tiny town in the middle of Wisconsin is filled with actually kind of the best players I had ever worked with, you know? Um, and it all kind of, it, it, and, and you know, it's not just the Bonnie Bear world. It was, it was, you know, S. Carey, it was meeting Trevor, it was Ryan Wilson, the guy who produced my this debut record is from Eau Claire. And I kind of, and Ben Lester, I mean, the, the list of musicians in, in Eau Claire are unbelievable. And it quickly like just made my whole perception of where music is made, you know, which is, you know, like, people think it's on the coast, it's in LA and New York, just completely rocked that. Mm -hmm. and. My wife laughs all the time that like I live, we live in New York City, and, and when I need to do a creative project, where I really, really work on music. I get on a plane, I go to Eau Claire, Wisconsin. She's like, "Well, why do we live in this really expensive place?" <laughs> That's the place you go for, like, make the art and the music you care about, and and it's a pretty good point. 
Uh, and so I, 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 I don't know what it is. I think it's uh, there's something cultural about about just what how, what people value in this community and. And I think it's just the individuals and it's just been a fostering, you know, climate of creativity and support. And that what you heard this in this performance was an example of that. Like we came, Trevor and I had never done this. And then we we started on a Saturday, I think it was, and Saturday and Sunday we rehearsed and we filmed this on Monday. And everybody at the Pablo Center was so supportive. We had the most incredible uh, resources at our disposal for our first band practice, right? <laughs> and that, that's unheard of in, from, from where I had come from before making this discovery. And so yeah. I, 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 I take none of it for granted. I'm so lucky to be a sort of adopted member of the, of the scene there. So, so backing up, uh, CJ, how did you find your way to Eau Claire initially? What, what, what brought you here? I have a group called Wine Music, which is a contemporary classical ensemble. It's a mixed sextet. That's violin, viola, cello, flute, clarinet, and then trumpet and French horn. Um, and we were playing at a festival called Music Now in Cincinnati, Ohio, that uh, Aaron and Bryce Dessner of the National Curate. And we were we played a concert like on one of the first nights of the festival. And like two nights later, Justin and Vern was going to play a concert, and he saw our set. And I had been a big fan of the first Rare record. He saw our set and said, "Hey, you want to stick around and play, you know, horns on my set?" And I was like, "Yep, I'll move my flight around." And, and we had a, it was a really special performance. And it wasn't a Bony Bear performance. It was just sort of like covering different songs that we all liked. And it was really, really a special evening. And musical friendship was born. And uh, and then we came. Uh, me and uh, a friend of mine from Y Music, Rob Moose, we both came out and became members of the sort of Pony Bear extended community and of collaborators. That's how I met Trevor. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. I met Trevor in, in <laughs> Berlin. We met in Berlin. Berlin, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, I think I'd, I'd, I'd come up to see, I've been living in Budapest and I came up to see a Bond show and, and, uh, me and CJ and, and the other brass player at that time, Reggie Pace, sat in the corner talking about mouthpieces and lip buzzing and, and you know, uh, horn stuff. And I, I, yeah, yeah, the schnapps were flowing for me that night. <laughs> it was boring. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And Trevor, you know, uh, you mentioned, uh, you know, growing up here. I mean, how, how have you seen... Uh, you know the, the music scene, or just the like the, the creative community around here since the time you were, you know, a small a small kid, all the way up until now. How has it how has it grown? How has it changed? Yeah. Um, um, it's you know it, it's it's always very interesting to also learn about um, what was going on in Eau Claire uh, before you know in the eighties and seventies and sixties. Um, of course, long before before I was really playing. Um, you know, so it's, it's kind of, I've seen it kind of build on its history, you know, um, from, of course, there's the legacy of, of jazz in Eau Claire from the university to uh, a concert center, the local bar, the joint, you know, so it kind of like, and this kind of started snowballing, um, you know, since then. And I think it's just been a lot of people putting putting in their, their time and putting in their kind of their creative energy. And that's just building and building and building on itself. And, and, and somewhat, I think Pablo Center is, is somewhat symbolic of that, you know, where one thing that I think is very, that I like a lot about Eau Claire is, um, and with Pablo and, and how it's partnered with the university, but also with the city, it's a lot of people seemingly putting music and the arts first, you know, and, and where it's, a, and the size of the city is you know, not so big, but not so small. It's a really nice kind of laboratory as you might think of it, or I think of it, you know, it's like what happens if we just really foreground arts and music in a, in a smaller town and give people access to it, like, like this, like a, a free stream, for example. Um, you know, and I, I like that there's, there's, so I, I think in that sense, um, it's maybe, um, it's grown with players and of course the Eau Claire's Music and Arts Festival, but um, a certain um, boldness, I guess, in, in some of these attempts of, of of trying out, um, uh, yeah, building a really beautiful performing arts center in a in a town uh, like this. 
And you mentioned the university and um, CJ, I know that we've, we've worked together in the past kind of via the university because you've been here with Y Music at helping out composition students. Um, and, uh, you know, Trevor, I know that you've, you've worked with uh, the jazz program, correct? Here with uh, the um, university? Department, I've done, um, I, I, I taught a course at the music department uh, this, this year. So it evolved in different ways, for example. And, uh, you know, with my time uh, running Pine Hollow, the studio uh, that I own and operate, you know, I've, I've worked with several students. And uh, can the both of you speak towards, you know, the, the caliber of students and musicians that uh, are here at our university? It, it was unbelievable. You know, my group, Wine Music, has a lot of, uh, so we are a contemporary classical group predominantly. And so we, our regular practice as an ensemble is to commission you know, kind of adult composers to write a, write a thesis. Um, and we did a really amazing residency at the University of Eau Claire where we asked um, what we thought were composition majors, but they weren't composition majors, they were just music majors at the school to write us pieces. And the caliber of composition was unbelievable. And, you know, the pieces we still think about and talk about and reference and then we got to record, I think we did the first recording session at the Pablo Center where we got to record the works and we performed them um, live in the community. And it was a really special um, collaboration between the ensemble and the music school. And we were just completely blown away by the, just the caliber of students. And then we we found out it's all undergrads, you know, and most of the time when we do programs at different schools, it's PhD students who are getting, you know, where if their pieces, they're fine right and it's what they use as part of the defense of their of their phd degree and these are all undergraduates and it just blew us away the level and it's been a consistent theme uh, through my musical experiences in town that i'm just like whoa like how, how is this this good you know that's great um yeah and i also had a, a similar experience um you no, know, uh, teaching a course at the university this this year actually in January, um, and also having having very um, astute, curious um, students who were exploring. It was just a, a general course, kind of on listening and, and just on sound, um, and um, which was also the university get taking a chance on just a very exploratory uh, uh, course, you know, that's not just music history and ear training. It was something that was looking at listening in a way in a wider social context as well. So I think there's a lot of, you know, it really, I guess, uh, um, students who are hungry for for these um, also, I mean, not exploratory, not non-traditional type of courses and uh, are ready for it. And also I think Pablo comes in that that with that too helping us like you know usher in uh new types of music education for the 21st century along with like hosting uh, an ensemble like wide music to do residency it's also like very innovative i think um pushes from both this kind of combination between pablo and the university which is yeah, great for everyone and also eau claire the music festival has been like such an important mm. part of my life i've premiered uh, we did, Wine Music did a collaboration with Tallest Man on Earth in our very first year at the festival, which led to a record and a series of concerts. Mm -hmm. Second year, we did a collaboration with the Staves, which led to a record release on None Such and it's tons beautiful. of concerts. Everyone should listen to that album. It's an amazing app. Amazing. And that, and, that was, and that was, we rehearsed at the university and premiered that music there. And then the third year, we did a, Wine Music did a collaboration with Paul Simon that led to kind of was the backbone of his last record he made and the ensemble was featured on the tour. And all of these things were birthed in this town. And this is like Paul Simon, Talisman on Earth, The Staves, Bony Bear, you know, like all of these things, these were major, major things. And, I, I, you know, I'll never forget uh, being on a, in the middle of a tour with Paul and, you know, the private jet landed at the airport in this small town in Wisconsin for us to try this total new way of imagining these songs you know mm -hmm. and it was kind of surreal why are we, and, and 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 people were like why are we here doing this and i was like because this community gave us a chance to try this brand new thing out and it was, it, and it was 
And it's really, really special. And it'll always be, you know, where I think of to go to try something new. Yeah, and it's and it's very fitting because you know I, I think you know as as a as a community, I mean we're 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 open to trying new ideas and uh, you know and, and, and getting better at at um, change all the time and trying things that it might be a little creatively uh, risky and you might fall flat on some stuff, but you know or it might be you know a a total uh, positive experience and new things get new things get uh, born from that and new uh, relationships get made and new you know networks get formed and um, and it creates like long lasting uh, uh, creative relationships and so uh, and I had never really thought about that CJ until you put it kind of right into that nice neat uh, list of like yeah there's a there's a lot of new things um, you know tried out here I just learned the other day um, I hope I have this right that uh, the, the the band with Anais Mitchell um, and uh, Eric Johnson, um, and um, uh, uh, Bonnie Light Horseman is who I'm speaking of. I, I, I believe their first kind of show was at an Eau Claire Music Festival, and so um, you know, and that's gone on to, to uh, some uh, some great uh, success. And so, uh, and Grammy, yeah, yeah. And so uh, you know, I kind of want to you know, you mentioned this a little bit earlier, uh, you know, kind of moving over into the CARM project. Um, you know, you've reached out to, you know, us here at, at Pablo and said, you know, I've got this release uh, date set at First Avenue, need a place to, to rehearse it. Um, is it possible? And of course, you know, we're, we're, we're certainly here for you. Um, tell us about that, the, the process of, you know, you know, you have this release for this record uh, and you need to kind of get it dialed in in a matter of days. And we had kind of a nice little laundry list of things that we were going to, you know, record for you um, for your your release sort of timeline, um, which included a tiny desk and some other other uh, uh, presentations. So go ahead, talk about about your experience uh, here, putting it all together. Well, I, I I was sort of you know it's also we're in the middle of a global pandemic, so everything is unbelievably complicated complicated right and i have family and you know and 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 we and i and i don't live there right so i was going to get on a plane and figure out how to make this music live because i have a record release show and i would sort of reach out to trevor and i was like hey like where should we rehearse should we start putting this together because it's also a very complicated setup that like i'd love to like explain to mm -hmm. folks watching what everybody was doing on stage um, and the first thing trevor said was like well let me reach out to the Pablo Center and see if they, you know, we, if we can do it there. All right, cool. As far as I know, it's like a fancy, you know, uh, uh, performing arts space. Like, I, I you know, I, I don't know if that's like overstepping, like this idea of like our very first band rehearsal, you know, I was thinking we put in Trevor's garage or something, you know? And right away from that initial email, yes, we'd love to make this happen. You want to do a Pablo screen, you know? And then Tiny Desk came through and, the next day we filmed Tiny Desk, you know, and we brought in somebody to film it and the, you know, the back resources and lighting and monitor people and sound and it, it was unbelievable. Yeah. And we just kept punching ourselves being like, this is, this is, this can't be real. It's just like, and it, it, it takes most bands a long time to get to the place where we're having rehearsals like scale. Um, yeah. And I think that kind of speaks to, you know, the, the question about like also kind of what makes Eau Claire special was, you know, it was literally just, we just communicated all together pretty, pretty quickly, pretty easily. And this would go forward. And, and I think there was just, we could get things done and make the music happen, you know, and it wasn't, it wasn't, it was nothing stressful about any of it, quite the opposite actually. And, and, and then, but also, or in addition, having like, top of the line, you know, help with, you know, our front of house, our monitors, the lights, um, the video, um, just professional, like, like to the T. So we felt very, I'm not sure what the right word is, but um, pampered is the wrong word, but something, you know, very special. <laughs> and, and we have, it's a complicated setup. And what you saw in this performance was day three, the morning yeah. day of our of our band never existing and you know, and that is only remotely possible with you know the support that we received from 
from the community and specifically mm -hmm. the public. And and I, what I really love about watching a performance like that, it, and it's always hard to watch your own performance uh, as as the performer. But what I really love is the, the discovery, you know, and what what your what, what what this performance captures so well is that sort of the first time we play the songs right and how it clicks yeah. into place for the first time. We're like, oh, that's how that goes. That's where it is. And yeah. and I feel so fortunate to have it to capture that like sort of like that moment, you know, and not after you know, a year and a half of touring the record where it becomes like, you know, sort of road and a part of how, muscle memory. This is like, there's no muscle memory. We're like, oh, what am I supposed to do now? What do I do now? I switch to this and then I switch to this and then I switch to this. Oh, it worked. We got it. You know, yeah. and it's really fun to see that like excitement. Yeah. Yeah, that was just very fun. And uh, so then, you know, that's, that is preparing a record for a release and, and, and the two of you rehearsing. Um, uh, CJ, I'll, I mean, I'll, I'll just start it with you because it's the most appropriate place to start. Talk about the creation of this incredible record. Uh, what was, what were the high points, the low points? How did it get done? Uh, how do you, how the heck do you release a record during this time? Well, um, ugh. well, the the idea for this record was was pretty was like really like sort of I had like a thesis statement, which was and something I talked with Trevor a lot about um, early on. Like we had like a lot of walks and coffees and beers talking about what a contemporary music record featuring the trumpet, not jazz, not classical, can be, and where does that come from? And the question I kept asking myself about this music was, what kind of record would my trumpet heroes? the past make they were alive today and sort of the network of musicians around them that i have so i and specifically like miles davis was like this is the new thing this is the new thing always moving forward he wasn't making what he thought of as kind of like institute institutionalized jazz it became that after he made it right he was always making creative music and that's what I wanted to do. And I thought, like, well, if Miles is around today, you'd want to work with the best beat makers, the best producers, the best songwriters, the best singers, the best instrumentalists, the best arrangers, and make truly contemporary music. That was always the goal with this project. And so it was produced by Ryan Olson, who's from Eau Claire. And those first two nights of writing with, with me and Ryan and Trevor and Justin all in the studio together, worked like writing this stuff together. And those are some of my favorite favorite memories of making this, of making this record support and like everyone was really excited um, that we were doing something that felt really brand new and i think it's had i think the end result is you can like it or not like it but i think that there's not anything that quite sounds like it or that like occupies what the, the territory that this occupies and so then we finished making it we had some beautiful collaboration Sufjan Stevens and Sharon Nova and Justin and Mouse on Mars and Ira and Georgia from Yola Tango and Trevor and, and countless other people. And it was set to come out uh, in the fall of the pandemic of 2020. And then we pushed it back or it was set to come out in the summer of 2020. We pushed it back to the fall. We finally pushed it back to the winter and when we pushed it back to January, we were like, well, things will definitely be back to normal by January. Um, and of course that wasn't the case. And it's felt funny releasing music now because a lot of the, a lot of releasing a record is back from the people you're around and musicians are going on tour and playing shows and feeling what an audience, how an audience reacts to this music. And we've played a number of, um, promo things. We've done Tiny Desk. We did a performance on Bear. We did the Pablo Stream. Um, we did a performance for WNYC Soundcheck. And never have we been in front of an audience. So we've never had that <laughs> feeling. What is it like? I've never even watched anyone listen to the music. You know, like, you know, like and so it just really kind of exists in my imagination how people are taking it in. And the feedback's been really positive. But it's just a very strange feeling to only be. Mm -hmm. making not watching other people and taking and take it in in any way mm -hmm. you know? and, and so it's just a, it's a funny time and I, I was texting trevor during the performance and like, i can't wait to actually yeah. do this from, you, yeah. know, you know and well, I that's what I love about music is, yeah, what i love about playing music is like 
I'm feeling a certain way. How effect, how efficiently can I get my feeling to you in the audience, right? And, and that's then that's like what I that's why I can think about constantly when I'm on stage. And that's like what I consider the highest art is like how efficient is that transfer of emotion, right? And we haven't got to do that with this yet. We haven't got to do that in, with any kind of music in mm -hmm. such a long time. Mm -hmm. I really, really love that. Can't wait to do that. And uh, you know, Trevor, you being involved from the you know from the very early stages, uh, what was your experience like? I mean, you know, CJ reaches out and says, "Hey, Trevor, I want to make a a record." You know, what, what's what's been your experience this entire time? Um, uh, it, well, fabulous, and uh, for a lot of the same reasons as as CJ mentioned, um, th those first couple nights that we were that were we were working together with uh, Ryan and Justin and. And CJ and I were there was a really wonderful spark and, and energy, um, and I think we were all we were all um, I'm not only it's not really being on the same page, but in the room together making music and just having a lot of fun together. And, um, and I think CJ and I, I know I, I respect him so much as a trumpet player and everything he's accomplished, and what he's done. Um, and I, I and even for me being like in this band, I've learned a lot from him as a trumpet player. Um, you know, but we also had different uh, approaches to the trumpet as well. And I think, you know, this has been a wonderful way for both of us to reflect on the instrument and to and to see the different paths the instrument can take you on in, in your in your life. And so there's also this kind of nice, um, not not philosophical experience of it, but just just the conversation around, you know, a, a very old instrument like the trumpet and how and how we you can take it and, and reconfigure it rethink it and and try to repurpose it and so so we've also had this nice dialogue together while while um you know making the music or just uh, in our in our own conversations which has um you know it's brought me back to some really you know some of my first loves first things i loved about playing the instrument as well um and just reconsidering a lot of things and even those, yeah, just the connection you have to the instrument. So there's that bond and interesting thing for making making the music that it's very l lovely to be playing this music um, as well. CJ, um, he's a great arranger, you know, and 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 he also, of course, with Bon Iver, he's done a lot of a lot of the bands you know, he worked with. He's arranged a lot of the music, so it's also um, another great aspect of this band. Um, that I haven't done with a lot of other bands that they're more improvised music that this is like, you know, having some music in front of you to also read and to play and to have parts. And it brings me back to some times when I was playing with maybe orchestras or in concert bands. And so there's, and there's a lot of different areas that like, I don't know, I, I, I can really experience the breadth of what it is to perform music. You know, whether it's improvising, whether it's reading music, or if it's making noises, or if it's playing trumpet. So I think all these things add up to a really uh, very fulfilling band or duo to be a part of, and and the music's great on top of it. So it's and so it kind of plays itself. Yeah, I really, I really love. Can you explain to folks watching like all what you're doing there? It's, yeah, it's I really mean, fun. so what, what's it's nice is like I've done all of a lot of these things in different. Uh, ensembles, um, but this is the one ensemble that I play with. Play that like I'm doing all of these things at once, and um, whether it's playing trumpet, playing keyboards, or playing um, drum machine, playing laptop, and some like no input feedback, and and somehow like CJ just heard all of it, like you know, like and it was like, oh, if you can do all of these things, or or not all of them, but like this can all fit somewhere in this music. Um, whereas I think other groups or other places that I play with, it's just one thing, you know, at a time or this sound in this band. Um, so that's, so I'm doing all these things, not at once, but in each song, there's a place for them. And, um, and so it's, it's also a unique challenge for me as a performer to, um, yeah, to incorporate all these. And, and what's, what's nice about it is, well, I think the difficult thing we'll say with playing, um, something like a drum machine or a laptop is sometimes you're versus like a trumpet or singing or something where you're more embodied. Um, like I feel like with this music, when you're playing the laptop or drum machine, you're still, you're in it. And, and I'm, I'm able to get into a nice flow without being like, Oh, now I'm doing something technical. And so I think this music really is allowed for 
um, those those kind of different forms of instrumentation to really breathe together. If that makes sense. Yeah, I think I added <laughs> that. Yeah, I think that even the best even if we're improvising. It's really, really, really like right. Like, and, and I could do. I'm doing something, and we're having that kind of chamber music moment together, mm -hmm. with each other, and and playing with each other, not just doing our part in a vacuum. You know, exactly, and, exactly. And I think that's the stuff that you know. Um, as you're saying too, when we start to play, when we have a chance to play in front of live, the things that we've talked about that we when we're playing more in front of live audiences that is be very exciting to really open up, you know, some more things and the stuff that we're just touching on now as as yeah. some first performances and um, again there there are things that we're doing in this um, the the Pablo stream that we hadn't done in some of these other um, performances uh, with for Tiny Desk or for Colbert, for example. And so just watching this, yeah, I, I texted CJ, I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot that we were doing some of this stuff. That was a little bit, I don't know, it was, it was, it was exciting to see, um, you know, that even though we, we have these songs, they're all, they're, they've been different. They've all had their own kind of, or each performance has had its own character to it, which is yeah. very exciting just from a musical performance standpoint. And one thing I wanted to ask, you know, you're, you know, you're mentioning, you know, um, you know, playing the laptop, you know, using, you know, synths, using samples, uh, uh, using noises, uh, you know, as a, as, as an arranger, as a composer, how do you not hit option overload? You know, how do you, how do you know what to put where and how do you know when to stop going down the rabbit hole of all the things you can do and make those creative decisions on, on like, this is the, this is the perfect sound for this spot. Um, but there's literally like infinite sounds that we can choose at this yeah. moment. It's, you know, it's kind of, it's funny on that, on, like, you know, in some of the arrangement that CJ, I mean, made there, there it's, I mean, it was, we were so nicely arranged in that, like, from like the, you know, typical key signature, time signature, et cetera, but also having in written things about like some certain noises that maybe, you know, you wanted to hear, or, like what has to happen here, but completely kind of not completely non-musical, but I think CJ was very aware of the certain palette that I work with and was able to then like, you know, guide that and know what he wanted to hear. So I think that was a lot of the kind of the, the really lovely curation that happened sonically in this. Yeah, and that's sort of the chamber music part, right? It's like I'm playing yeah. in the Middle East. So that's not where the noise thing comes in. That might be where the drum machine adds a little bit of support to highlight that melody from a rhythmic standpoint. And then that melody ends before the next chorus starts, and that's where an improv improvised moment of these kind of noise sounds will mm -hmm. step forward. And, you know, it's not often that you talk about the drum machine and chamber music in the same context, but those are like two of my favorite things to do. Yeah. And, and it's really fun to think about that. No hi-hats here, but maybe add, add a little more kick and snare to this section of it. And, and it keeps it alive and it keeps it breathing. And I think it would be literally impossible to see the same show without doing the exact same thing each time. Yeah. yeah. And so the the bigger picture of the record, CJ. I mean, we we, we kind of keep you know uh, touching on playing this in front of people, playing this in front of people. What does the bigger picture look like uh, for this 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 record cycle, if we can even call it a, a, a tour cycle? I mean, is is this something that you're going to plan on touring for you know a, a year, two years? What's your what's what's going on in your head there? We're we're really excited so much at these fun. Like, uh, I wrote a song with Sufjan Steven uh, called a Song of Trouble, and it's really, I, 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 I'm really, very really proud of that song. And so far, we've done that song with Sean Carey. Um, I've done it with Leslie Feist. I've done it with Maya Hawk on Colbert. And I did it with Jake Lupin in Minneapolis at first half. So, what I really love about the way the project is taking shape, not only a couple months old, um, but I love that it's malleable and different people can come in and step in the different songs and and so it can really hopefully it can live on for a while that being said we're already working on new music and we've been writing a lot of a lot of new stuff it's really exciting i have some new collaborations coming down the pike and it's it's really exciting to see new stuff and to think about now that we have like kind of the idea of what the live experience will be it's 
go back and write some more and think about like while we're writing, how can this be realized? And how can we take some of the live stuff that you guys saw tonight and incorporate that into the record making process? Mm. Um, it's been really, yeah. been really exciting. Um, you know, it's, and it's, I guess there's kind of a silver lining to this time period. I mean, this, it sounds like this record was created through collaboration um, and, uh, you know, and just kind of a thread through this entire talk back has been collaboration, even, you know, pre-COVID going back, you know, 10 years, you know, what got you to Eau Claire was collaborating with musicians. And then you make this record on a collaborative efforts and even the rollout of it, you know, um, not being able to go out and play in front of audiences every single night and get it, you know, almost to that sixth sense state where it's just, uh, this is what we're doing every night. Here's our parts, here's our band. Yeah, and yeah. it's all dialed in, you know, now you're collaborating with, you know, it's the, it's the same song, but it's you're collaborating with different singers. And, uh, mm -hmm. and so, you know, it, it's kind of a, it's an interesting arc right now. And it sounds like that's sort of led into new music. Um, and so, yeah, just finding a little bit of a, of a silver lining to this, uh, this, this interesting time, we'll call it. Totally. Very big silver lining. Yeah, it's 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 been really. Uh, um, I I just I mean, say so collaborating with CJ. That's said earlier to the. It's like I I grow and learn a lot from these mm -hmm. from collaboration and and from the the people then who CJ introduces me to and and or how we learn together and 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 hopefully with any musical project there is that space where you can grow in you know and learn from the project and and. Um, be that musically or you know socially or emotionally or in any of these areas and, and this for me i think you would agree that yeah this is this, this has that <laughs> so well uh guys uh, uh thank you for your your time this evening um and uh, thanks again for folks that were uh were tuning in um you know i really appreciate uh you know cj and, and trev you know you uh, reaching out a few months ago um and we absolutely wanted to uh, be a part of this of this journey here at pablo center um, we really appreciate all the the kind things that you've uh you know, said about um our our crew and our staff and the way that we've been been treated um any any parting comments before we we call it an evening no just we're so appreciative of, of everything um and and we can't wait to be back totally can't wait absolutely great well thank you again so much cj and trevor and thanks to all who tuned in this evening um everybody have a great uh, a great night we'll be seeing you again soon yeah. thanks good night, everyone. everybody nice good night